U.S. inflation will affect the world. Here's how. There's a lot to unpack of this delicate and complicated topic. So put on your thinking caps, hit the like button, and subscribe to Big Brain Money. Let's get started. Before we could talk about inflation, we have to understand what inflation is. Inflation is not just the prices of products and services going up for any random or unknown reasons. Somewhere in the previous century, the Bank for International Settlements and most central banks in the world thought it was a good idea to set up the annual inflation target at 2%. They said that it would provide stability and trust. We know that it's not what happens in reality, even though most of us are not bankers. When the target is 2%, it means that central banks and those who influence them want the value of your labor and most of your assets to go down at this rate every single year. If not, then why would they set this 2% target when they very well know that that is the real-world effect it will have? Every 50 years or so, everyone's labor and most of their assets lose 100% of their value. That's basic math. So at least every 50 years or so, they have to fix this problem. Hence the 2007-2008 financial crash. At the military-industrial complex, it's nearly exponential growth since the Second World War and the wars and armed conflicts that never seem to end. So inflation is by design. It's not by accident, nor as a result of mysterious economic forces. U.S. Inflation and the World Today, the U.S. dollar is still considered the world's dollar, though more and more people don't think that's a reality that should be maintained. When you read, see, or hear news for an international audience, amounts of money are nearly always mentioned in U.S. dollars. More than 60 countries beg their currencies to the U.S. dollar. And most of the oil that is being traded around the world is being charged and paid in U.S. dollars, petrodollars. Though the petrodollar is increasingly being avoided by an increasing number of private traders and nations, including China, Russia, India, and soon even Saudi Arabia. This is a big problem for the United States, a critical problem even. Because if this trend gains more momentum, which it likely will, the U.S. is going to experience waves of hyperinflation of the kind the world has not yet experienced, ever. The problem is not the petrodollar itself, per se. One of the real problems is that the U.S. Federal Reserve has been printing way too much money for much too long, allegedly worth more than $2 trillion today. As a result, most of the dollars in circulation today are not backed by any real, tangible value or assets. As a point of reference, the gold that the U.S. government owns today is worth just a little over $11 billion. Also, the GDP of the United States doesn't cover all those dollars either, because the U.S. government, its national debt, is currently about 142% of the GDP. Meaning, all the commercial output in the U.S. in one year, currently around $21 trillion, would not be enough to pay for the U.S. its national debt of $30 trillion. If the U.S. was forced to pay all its debt using all commercial output, it would be bankrupt and still be left with $9 trillion in debt. If we also take the U.S. government's total assets into account, worth around $6 trillion, there would still be a $3 trillion debt, which would obviously not back the value of all those dollars that have been printed. Clearly, the U.S. dollar must be about trust and nothing else. A trust game. Trust that investors and consumers have in the U.S. dollar. But that trust is fading away quickly, hence the petrodollar gradually being replaced by the Chinese yuan the Russian ruble, the Indian rupee, and several other national currencies. At a certain point, the U.S. will be left with hundreds of billions of dollars and petrodollars, if not more, that fewer and fewer people will want to own or trade in. This will cause a historic level of inflation in the U.S., because then there will be way too many dollars in circulation compared to the value of the economic output in the U.S. and the assets held by the U.S. government which is already the case, but the trust game currently prevents a collapse of the system. The only way to maintain the trust in the short term is by acquiring more new assets, for which the U.S. government will have to borrow more money, money it can't pay back, since it can't even pay its current debt. 
Eventually, investors will find it too risky to own U.S. dollars or to invest in U.S. government debt papers. As a result, investors in the U.S. and from around the world will start to exchange their remaining dollars into other currencies, perhaps even cryptocurrencies, and will start to sell their U.S. government debt papers driving the value of the U.S. dollar even further down, which in turn will result in more inflation. Those who don't exchange their dollars or who don't sell their U.S. debt papers are going to lose money, all the way down to the point where hardly anyone will want to buy dollars or U.S. government debt. Smart and well-informed investors will not choose these options, obviously. Aside from the hundreds of billions in losses that the devaluation of the dollar will bring about for small and big investors in the U.S. and abroad, the next historic international financial crash will also provide opportunities for other players. Investors will invest in other countries, especially in Southeast Asian countries, but also in India, China, Brazil, Israel, and even Ukraine and Russia. This will permanently shift economic, political, and military power away from the United States and towards those nations where investors find better long-term investment conditions. In fact, there already exists a framework in which this shift will take place. It's called the Belt and Road Initiative, which is headed by the Jinping government in China. According to the Council on Foreign Relations, China's Belt and Road Initiative, sometimes referred to as the New Silk Road, is one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects ever conceived in the world. Launched in 2013 by Jinping, the vast collection of development and investment initiatives would stretch from East Asia to Western Europe, significantly expanding China's economic and political influence. Jinping's vision for the BRI includes the creation of a vast network of international and intercontinental railways, energy pipelines, highways, and streamlined border crossings, both westward through the mountainous former Soviet republics and southward to Pakistan, India, and the rest of Southeast Asia. The Belt and Road will also further expand the international use of China's currency. The renminbi and break the bottleneck in Asian connectivity Jinping has been quoted as saying, Another country that will play a key role in China's BRI is Israel. According to former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, cyber is the real domain of power. Netanyahu made the statement in 2019 during a cybertech conference in Tel Aviv. Clearly, Israel, considered the Silicon Valley of the Middle East, is going to position itself close to China on the political stage because it wants to attract hundreds of billions of shekels in new investments for the country's various tech industries, ranging from fintech and health tech to military and space technology. Current Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has also already indicated that Israel wants to play a major role in the BRI. For instance, last year, Bennett introduced his Omega Plan, a plan that seeks to make Israel the radar of the world for future pandemics. With Israel being a major hub for high tax and nearly all multinational tech companies, the Chinese government will not be in a position to ignore Israel's power ambitions, especially as Silicon Valley in the U.S. is becoming less influential every day. The only thing constant in life is change, and change can be quite scary. What are your thoughts on this vital information? We hope this video was useful, and you're encouraged to become a subscriber with Big Brain Money. All you have to do is hit that like button, subscribe, and share this video.